Hey folks, it's Chris Wall. As more of your infrastructure is defined using code stored in version control, a new challenge emerges. How are you gonna handle your branching strategy? After all, the code requires patches, hotfixes, updates, new resources. There's a lot going on for you and your team to tackle. But don't worry, this video dives into branching strategies for Terraform code stored and managed by Git. And with that, let's get to it. Let's take a look at the first way you can set up your branching strategy. This is based off of kind of classic software development where we have a couple different branches. In fact, for this particular piece of code that does site deployments into Amazon, I've got the dev and the main branch. If we look at this another way, we can see the active branches dev is default because it's where I want new feature branches to come into. And the main branch is protected so that people can't force a merge or accidentally delete the branch. And it's also where we trigger any builds to get deployed into AWS in this example, based on continuous integration when new resources and whatnot are built within Terraform. And by the way, you can change the default branch at really any time by going into the repository settings for the project within GitLab and expanding the default branch and choosing whichever one you want. So I have dev here, but I could go back to main if I needed to. So let's take this for a test drive. Uh, I'm on the main branch of this particular project. Let's go ahead and see what branches exist. So git branch R, and we can see dev and main, no surprise there. The idea here is that we're gonna wanna check out the dev branch. And then from there, we build a feature branch that gets incorporated into dev. Once all the different feature branches kind of octopus their way into dev, then we make one merge request and put all that code into main, and that deploys the code into production. The easiest method is to go ahead and do a git checkout and then use the dash b for a new branch. And I like to do a kind of a prefix word here. So like feature and then whatever after that, the feature that you're working on. So it might be something like, I don't know, like and subscribe. I love that meme, it'll never die. <laughs> uh, so I'm saying git checkout, make a new branch, call it feature like and subscribe and base it on dev. And that is kind of redundant because I'm already in the dev branch, but I like to make sure I'm always pulling from the dev branch when I make a new feature. And in this case, I can say, let's let's make a change. Let's go ahead and say, you know what? The IP address for this customer gateway changed. It was 1235, now it's 1246, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm using my little shortcuts here. We'll say this commit updates the customer gateway IP, something like that. And that's it. We now have a feature branch. We can merge this up into the dev branch, kind of collaborate on it and push it into main later on when we like all the changes that are being proposed. Now, in order to actually get this branch to something that's beyond my computer, we need to push it. So we're gonna do git push with a U because we actually wanna set a new branch here that we built that doesn't exist before. We're gonna set this up to the origin and we'll call it feature like and subscribe. There we go. Now we have that new feature branch. It's available because it's now pushed into the project located in GitLab. I can now create a merge request and I can send this information over to the dev branch. I've switched over to GitLab and it already gives you this handy little banner at the top saying you push this feature branch to the project. You wanna make a merge request? And yeah, I do wanna make a merge request. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we'll open that up. A couple things to point out here. You see at the top, it says new merge request and from feature like and subscribe into dev. That's because we based this feature branch on the dev branch and it already knows that. And for some reason we goofed that up and we had the wrong branch. We can change branches here. We can say, oh, you know what? Actually we're from the feature like and subscribe branch but we wanted to be in something else. So it's not like you're stuck and you can never go back. But I'm gonna back up here and let's actually make this request here. So we have the branch going into dev, everything else is fine. I'm not gonna check any boxes or anything. And we'll submit the merge request. Now, the neat thing here is that this feature branch is being proposed as a merge into dev. Therefore, all of the continuous integration pipeline information still applies. It's still going to test all of the code and validate it and then build a Terraform plan for this particular merge request to see if the dev branch would actually work if we actually merge this code into it. So this is really kind of a three step process. The first is create your feature branch for whatever it is you're trying to change or slice up a complex problem into smaller feature branches and spread those throughout your team, they all submit merge requests for their feature branches to the dev branch, which is sort of like a staging area where you're coalescing all these changes into kind of a new version of what production is gonna look like. Then when everybody's happy, you submit the final merge request to go from the dev branch into main, 
and that actual merge completion process will trigger the continuous integration engine to push the code changes live into production. There's a couple cool tools that you have at your disposal. Uh, you can see the pipelines for the merge request, both the bottom one, which was just when the feature branch appeared in GitLab, as well as the top one, which is marked as detached, because that's actually part of the merge request process. We said whenever there's a merge request in CI, go ahead and test the plan for Terraform just to see if it would pass or fail. Additionally, you can see all the changes that are encapsulated in the merge request here. There's only one, we're changing the local.tf file to change the customer gateway address from 1234 to 1246. As long as we like this change, I can go ahead and click merge. And in fact, I'm gonna hit delete source branch because I don't like to have these feature branches just sort of hanging around. Once they're incorporated, I just wanna merge them. And now this code will be made part of the development branch. I can see that by clicking into the dev branch and we should see that we're one commit ahead of the main branch at this point. So we have this new authored change here. And if I switch back to the main branch, we can see that this commit doesn't exist because nothing's been changed in the main branch at this moment. From a terminal perspective, I'd wanna change back to the dev branch, go ahead and pull in the changes from the GitLab project, and then go ahead and delete the branch. I like to do a git branch first uh, to see what's there and then repeat the command with an uppercase D and the feature branch. You can usually type a few letters and then tab complete. And we'll go ahead and delete that because we wanna make sure that we're not using a branch locally that's already been removed in the remote. Now, in addition to feature branches, the dev branch and the main branch, there's also times where you're just like really in a bad spot. Like things are not happening the right way. An API was deprecated or some resources aren't working and you need to do a hotfix. Basically, you need to apply a very specific feature, if you will, or hotfix to the main branch to fix something in production right now. These sort of emergency hotfixes are usually something I carve off the main branch. So I do git checkout, new branch, hotfix, you know, oopsie, <laughs> something like that. And we'd base that on the main branch. And the idea here is we make the change, like say, you know, it's the one, two, three, four, we, we need to change it actually to nine, nine, because everything's broken. And that needs to be the change made right now, like make it, make it, make it. So we'll go ahead and add that and we'll commit uh, this particular change. We'll say uh, emergency hotfix for CGW, the customer gateway, something like that. We can now push this upstream. So from origin to hotfix, oopsie, and it exists up in the GitLab project now. The difference with a hotfix is that you need to apply this change to both main branch, which is in production to fix the problem, and you need to put it into the dev branch so that you don't accidentally unfix this later. I typically do a non fast forward merge so we don't squash all the changes into like this, this pseudo package. That means we're actually gonna make a new commit representing the merge to make it easier to identify what happened and, and what was changed and why. But again, make sure to do that to main and to dev so that you don't regress and unfix this issue later. Now, if all this sounds too complex for your environment and you don't really need all these layers, that's fine too, you don't need them. So in this case, I've just gone back to the code. We have the main branch. And if I need to do a change, I can do a new feature branch. So we'll get checkout, new branch, feature, you know, improve CDWIP, something like that, directly from the main branch. And ideally I would have put main at the end there, but I'm already in main, so I've just got the habit of not doing it. Uh, but this is gonna be the feature branch that I'm working on. This is where I would make the change to be, you know, one, five, five, whatever we need it to be. I would then add these changes, commit them. Here's the, you know, improve the IP address, do something better, whatever it needs to be. And then I would push that as a new feature branch into the origin and boom, there you go. From there, you just do a merge request like normal and your code would be reflected live in the production environment using the resources that you specified. And that's it. Honestly, it's a pretty straightforward workflow where you have the main branch, which is kind of the protected default environment that is pushed to production, and everything else is a feature branch based off of that, usually good for small changes, small teams, or environments that are fairly static and don't need a lot of change. Regardless of which branch strategy you use or how big or small your team is, I still recommend using tags to mark the releases of code. So here for the site deployment code in US West 1, I've got a version 1.0 that was associated with the main branch at that particular point in time. 
And it's a great sort of time capsule that you can use to track the evolution of this code, especially if you're a small team now, maybe you grow later. Or like me, I forget all this stuff constantly. I'm working on all these different projects and to expect your brain to remember every single thing that you've done and what version it was, that's not reasonable. So use tags and do versions, you know, 1.0, 1.1, whatever makes sense for you so you can track the evolution and the history of this code as it progresses from its origin to what it is today. So that's it. We talked about the complex branching strategy, if we want to call it that, kind of the classical one, where you've got the four swim lanes. You've got feature branches, the dev branch, any hotfixes, and the main branch. And then we talked about the more simplistic, kind of easier use case that's really good for small or static environments, where you just have that main branch, and then you create individual feature branches to make changes and put those directly into main as you go. I hope this helps with your branching strategy. I'd love to hear more about what you'd like to see on the channel. And as always, if you could give a subscribe, a like, a comment, anything to help this channel grow, I always appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you so much. See you next time.